Okay, so what's my dream tonight? I was kind of in a in a what you call a public place, I would say. But interestingly it's a dark place. But it's public. And I was seeing some kind of a a group that try to what you call promote something in that public place. So I was part of a group. And interestingly, as part of that uh, performance, so called, or as part of the marketing, I don't know whether it's marketing or not, but I was part of that group. Well, whatever it is, I'm dressed naked and and people are to see me naked. And there's a fellow lady on the other side, in the same group as I'm in, is also in that mode. And and what am I thinking? Well, I'm I'm thinking that there might be a pain in my spine if I stand too long. And I wasn't in a state of delight to show my body, but I was not angry or upset showing my body. But of course I was seeing myself only and no one else because I was so concerned about what I look like. That's right. It's part of a work process that I'm supposed to do at, the, at that place. You see, everybody is naked. But the person himself that I am few naked f just for himself but actually everybody is naked and then we are in this world to present that nakedness to the public to be observed and it matters to me what I will look like because it's always my nakedness being exposed to the world all throughout this work process who told you you were naked? nobody, right? but somehow I feel that way and the whole problem of existence in the duplex world is because the person feels naked what others will think of me as I am but the truth is that I have to be as I am and I am indeed presenting myself naked and there's no choice about that but Adam and you didn't feel naked before he had the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil I always boast myself that I could be as myself despite what other people say of me. Now in some measure there's some truth in that. But even then I find myself exploding when people insult me a lot. Yeah, I find myself very very saddened when something is being lost from me. The reactions are strong. And why? Because I care for what I am. Of course we need to care, but then then there's a lot of attachment, isn't that right? Of course the gurus will tell me don't attach yourself. Sounds easy. But how do you don't attach yourself when you want to be a winner and not a loser? 
in this life. That's why I find that the only way out to bring the nameless presence out into the world I live is by watching my thoughts. Because if I want to play my game in this world and to feel the game being played in this world, then my nameless presence is kind of drowned in a game. That's what a boy is like. A boy doesn't know his own self. That's why he played the game so well. And he can connect with his friends so well. And even if he's beaten, he enjoys the, the winning and the losing. But not about the man. The man is kind of locked up with a self presence. And he finds it difficult to congregate in a group. So how does he do it? That's why I find that observation of thoughts and to see that this world is a thought and not just a physicality where I play in will make it easier for the nameless presence to dwell into everything that I lived in. Or otherwise, you're just involved in this world, right? Yes, you're just involved in this world as a winner and as a loser. But you can be involved as a winner and loser, provided you see that winning as a thought and that losing as a thought. Then, then as a thought, the nameless presence comes to take ownership of whatever that you do. If you don't do that, then even if you win, it is yourself the one of the two that takes ownership. And when that happens, when the other guy wins, that his one of the two takes ownership and you feel bad about it. And in this dream, notice very carefully, it is a dark place. Although I'm in public, but it's a dark place. And the one that is uh, my fellow friend in the group, I couldn't see him really. I just know that he's there, but I'm not aware that he's there. I don't see him there. What does that imply? What does it mean? It implies that I'm watching the world via my thoughts. Why? Because there's no reflected light. So it is a dark place. That's very true. When I watch the world with the thoughts, uh, I'm no longer at the glazed of the reflected light that bounce back from me to another and another back to me. I am actually by myself alone. I am by myself and my nameless presence is the one that made me see the world and I notice myself naked. Because in this dream it's actually saying that I am indeed watching the world with a toy. So what this dream is actually telling me is that when I watch the world via my toy, it's going to be a singular experience. There's no one going to be around with me. I won't be partaking with this transactional thing. I won't be burdened by the opposites to the opposites. I'm by myself alone. And when I see the world, it's just my own creation, my own space-time. And I exist the people in the world because I exist truly, only I am. And because I see the world through my own space-time, I control the world. I control the world as far as my space-time is shared by them. So everybody in my space-time, as long as you see my space-time, I'm the nameless presence of that space-time and therefore I'm the king of that kingdom. And they enter into my space-time when they take the handle which I provide for them. That's the classic part. The minute they take my handle, they will live in my space-time relating to that handle. Oh, is this possible? Now Ruth is going for a hearing. And what I did was, 
I look into my thoughts, then look at Rupi. So now Rupi becomes my space time. I feel Rupi. Now Rupi is presented to the hearing. So in order to the hearing, hears Rupi. But all this while, I'm at home, and my mind is watching at Rupi. Watching via space time. That's the most important thing about it. Going through the hearing. And I feel the roof while she's there at the hearing. So in other words, my nameless presence controls the space-time of Ruth. Now when those people in the hearing ask questions of Ruth, and Ruth answered those questions, those people enter my space-time. The space-time which I created via my thoughts as, as I think of Ruth. And all I need to do is I, here at my home, write down and say, Ruth is, is joyous and victorious over the hearing. It's come out of free. What will happen next? Whatever they come out from the hearing, even if it's prolonged to another hearing, finally it will follow my will. Why? Because the space-time is a controller. And of course, in the space-time, there's always the attacker on the other side. But I have to agree with the attacker. Another case. All around me is my space-time. When I look at a talk that looks at the world, so when I talk to people and people listen to me and they follow me, they be entered my space time. But of course, my nameless presence is watching everything that is taking place in the space time. And what's next? I simply have to will it and everyone will actually do as I will. How to achieve this miracle? The important thing is that I must observe the world and everything I do from the nameless present. And people bite my space-time. They enter my space-time. But since I am the nameless presence that created the space-time, I'm the king and my words matters. In other words, really, I didn't have to do anything but just simply to observe the thought that observed the world. When I observe the thought that observed the world, and I'm doing it every moment, then every person that engages themselves with me is engaged with my space-time. And my nameless presence is always kept separate, behind and beneath. And my nameless presence is the I that controls all things. And therefore, the will of my presence is paramount. It happens so long as my space-time is controlled by the nameless presence. And that space-time, in order to be controlled by the nameless presence, is created by me via my thoughts. It has to be created by me so that I'm the creator and that it has to be revealed by my nameless presence because I'm the creator of that space-time and I'm the king of that space-time. Awesome. So in other words, I'm not the king of this world. I'm the king of that space-time. That's why Jesus said, my world is not of this world, but my world is the space-time, which I am king of. That's why the story goes that when Jesus was crucified, indeed he was, but the attacker came, but he simply agreed to the attacker. But he knew with utter faith that his will will be fulfilled. He will be resurrected. He will still be alive, even after his so-called body gets in bed. How come? Because the will of a man is the king of the space-time which that man created.